Hey Balls, it's Horton here. Doing ski reviews and whatnot, um, I, um, I adjust quite a few fins. I see a lot of skis, I see a lot of fin blocks. And even the best manufacturers in the water ski industry, they're not really fin block manufacturers. I mean, they job them out, and um, I think most of the fin blocks made are pretty darn good. But every once in a while, I get examples, even from the very best manufacturers, where if you know what you're looking for, you see a pretty obvious goof. Um, just recently, I had a ski uh, where <laughs> you set the ski in, I use a ski dock. So you set the ski in the ski dock, and you get all your adjustments right, and as you set your, uh, your T-bar down into the clamp and go to tighten it, if you actually put a mic on it, as you tightened it, the fin moves about six thousandths of an inch. How is this possible? Well, if the two faces of the fin clamp is the clamp, if they're not perfectly square with each other and with the top of the ski, as you tighten stuff shifts and the fin gets moved. So, the solution, Andy Goldberg, head case ski accessories. Is that what he calls himself? Let me check, let me check, wait. Is it head case? It is uh, head case ski accessories. All right, so Andy, he is the only guy that I know of who makes fin clamps to make fin clamps. I mean, it's, I'm sure it's not his business, but this is his side business. So let's see what he's got. Uh, trusty knife, weapons edge, Jeff Gastra, you guys know. Um, there we go. Okay, so this is um, Andy's fin clamp, and this one actually is specced for the Monte Carlo, the Radar, the HO, and the older goods. Um, I didn't know the older goods were the same as the Monte Carlo and the HO uh, and Radar, but that doesn't, it's not a huge surprise. Close. And you know, uh, I know that Andy has done some things, he's made some design choices, that he's thought long and hard about. But I gotta tell you, the biggest thing about somebody like Andy is passionate about just making a fin block. He's not hes not some machine shop that makes a great fin block and knocks it out for one of the big ski companies day after day, and then the regular machinist is sick and some apprentice is in there and doesn't realize that a fraction of a percentage of a degree of angle off on the face of the fin block is going to make the fin shift when you tighten it. Or, I don't know what causes it, but some inaccuracy that makes your fin move while you're skiing. We, As skiers, we're crazy picky. So, I mean, I think that's kind of the endorsement of Andy is, is he's crazy picky. He tells me that he spent three or four years trying to figure out how to make the per perfect fin block. I mean, that's crazy. But, could be the best fin block ever. So, as I look at it, I don't mean to be a smart ass, but it looks like a fin block. Um, he has made the choice, which I find is interesting, to make it a single piece and not a two piece fin block. And in his email, he kind of explained to me a little bit, and I'll, I'll, be, I'll be honest, I'm not 100% clear on why that is. But as I look at it, <laughs> as I look at this, I'm going to stop the video and go get my T bar. Because I see something that he's done that gets me really excited. Okay, so, I'm back. hold on, ballers. I'll be right back. And I think I'm recording. Yeah, I'm recording. Cool. Hey, so, <laughs> this this is like, <sighs> this is really cool. I'll show you. So, here's something Andy's done. And I'm going to have to take a picture of this because it's just not going to show very well in the video. But, he's ground off the crown on the set screws. So if you've read Jay the Fin Whisperer's book, he's always talking about how the crown on the set screws carves a groove into your fin when you're adjusting it. And so like the first time you adjust it, it feels awesome. And then the next couple of times you're trying to adjust and you can't figure out why you can't get to your numbers, that's because the blade is stuck on the crown on the set screws. I'll take some pictures. Maybe we'll, I don't know how the hell. I'll show you this. This is cool.
So this alone is worth the price of admission. So he's got ground offset screws, which Andy, I never doubted you, but if I had, the ground offset screws solved it. Jay the Fin Whisperer, this is your guy. You should call this guy. All right, so uh, it's single piece, ground set screws. I just got to say the cool thing is it's precision. He's made, the, uh, he's made these holes a little bit extra big in case, in the rare chance, that the, uh, the inserts on the top of your ski are not exactly lined up. There's a little bit of play there. So if you want to put your fin in the block and put it in the ski and then true it up a little bit and then crank it tight, you've got that opportunity. He's just thought of a lot of things. It's just about going that extra mile. So... Uh, if you are one of those guys who habitually adjust your fin, or if you are frustrated with the fin that came, or the fin block that came on your current ski, you need to give this a try. Alright, real quick before I wrap this up. He gave me a couple of fins, and I'm actually excited about this because who doesn't like to have a few extras? Alright, so looking at the good fin, again, Attention to detail as the wind comes up on me here. So some of you, some of you may know that I used to uh, to manufacture fins out of carbon fiber, and one of the things that always took a lot of my time was getting the leading edge of the blade just exactly right. And as I look at this, I'm going to say that this fin right here, attention to detail, leading edges, a little tiny bevel on each uh, cavitation hole. This is one of the most carefully made fins I've ever seen. So this is the good shape. I'm getting kind of excited about this. I'm gonna have to uh, pull the ski I'm working on, working with, or skiing on right now apart and uh, put all this on there before I ski next time. Okay, and this is a uh, HO radar Monte Carlo shape. And again, just the, the attention to detail, it's clean leading edge, no sharp edge, just a tiny little chamfer or bevel um, on those cab holes. This is really nice looking stuff. So I'm impressed. It's uh, like $130, $129 plus shipping for this uh, for a fin and fin clamp. It sort of sounds like a lot, but if you've got a factory fin block and every time you adjust it, your fin moves, or if your fin moves over a week of skiing, I, I, I can't help you if you're not willing to part with $120, $130 bucks to get it right. So I'm super impressed. I'm going to use this stuff. Thank you, ballers. doing what I do, uh, reviewing skis and doing some, uh, some testing kind of off the record. Uh, there's a lot of fin adjusting. I see, see a lot of skis come through my shop. What is this? What is this? Start over. Hey ballers, it's Horton here. And, um, as you can imagine, I probably adjust more fins than most. Um, I'm personally not a guy that'll get a fin that he... That, Hey ballers, it's Horton here, and as you can imagine, I adjust quite a few fins, but before I start, I want to make clear, when I get a ski set up right, I'm the kind of guy that writes down the numbers, tightens the clamp, and walks away, right? I'm, I, we have a message. Uh, it's a text message. 
from Ward McLean. Hey ballers, Torton here. And um, as you can imagine, I adjust quite a few fins. Um, I don't know. Hey ballers, it's Horton here. And I'll fix my hat. Hey ballers, it's Horton here. And this is for the blooper reel. I don't know. Man beaten by UPS box. USPS box. Waiting on a wind gust. 